Good morning, sweet world, and welcome to the No Dunks Podcast on the Athletic Network. Today's classic brought to you by Neutral Vodka Seltzer, made with real vodka, real seltzer, real juice. It's neutral, the one with the umlaut. It's Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023. I'm Jay Eski. It's here in the Classic Factory, and alongside me, as always, Tass Mellis. Podcast listeners, this toots for you. Next to him, <laughs> it's the bearded one, Matab Shah Hot Boy, who was giggling away for that cold <laughs> open, Trey Kirby. <laughs> and last but not least, over yonder, making the magic happen, super fart producer, JD. Hello. There he is, and here we are. Shout out to the stream team joining us live right now on YouTube. Like the vid, comment away, and make sure you subscribe to No Dunks. Get any and all of your No Dunks merch over at nodunks.com. And hey, this is big news. The NDCU, the No Dunks Cinematic Universe, <laughs> expanded last night thanks to the premiere episode of JD and his wife Rachel's brand new pickle podcast called <laughs> Pickleball Podcast. <laughs> I mean, you put a bunch of pickles on the fucking yeah, graphic. It's... I'm going to accidentally say just pickles. A little on the nose. But, uh, yeah, know. no dinks. Uh, we could have just put a bunch of dicks all over that graphic, too. <laughs> and then with, like, uh, I guess crossed out. Because it's called No Dinks. Yeah. And it yeah, dropped in no the uh, No Dunks podcast feed last night. We got a big tournament coming up this weekend, MLP, Daytona. 2023 mm -hmm. so i had to do it had to do it so preview that and you know we'll drop drop them in every once in a while there's only five more events in the year so it's probably going to be about five more okay. podcasts okay. so just for fun well, you guys you know. watch it every weekend well rachel watches every week i don't watch every week you go pot every weekend <laughs> oh my god ppa guess what ben johns and emily waters won again <laughs> That's the pop. Wow, wow, what an upset with regards to the top five <laughs> rankings, Jamie. Right? That was, that was uh, crazy to me. Uh, uh, no spoilsies, but I will say I was pleased to see Rachel following along uh, with the Classic Factory ethos and going for ten names in her top five. Ten that was names. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, and number one, pure Homer pick. Like, <laughs> absolute Homer pick. That's how you do it. Yep. Yeah, we got a Lee back in the, the cinematic universe, a Lee Waters. She's 16. <laughs> That's right. Best pickleballer out there. No Dinks, the Pickleball po Podcast. It's not easy to say not for easy. me. Yeah. No Dinks, the Pickleball Podcast. We also had a better... A... People, like, the first response I saw was, is it April 1st? <laughs> <laughs> that was the first comment I saw when we shared this last night. Right. <laughs> it does it has the vibe of a nice April Fool's totally. Day break. Totally. But it's real. It's real. It's, it's real. glorious. It's glad you did it. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. We also have no bunts. That lives in the uh, NDCU. You just had a show. Mere, I don't know, minutes ago it feels yeah. like. That one available over at the Athletic Baseball Show, the YouTube feeds and the podcast feeds. Uh, Tass talking to our guy. Joel McMillan uh, in Taiwan about this incredible World Baseball Classic final last night. It was a great tournament. It may have not been a pickleball tournament, but it was a heck of a tournament. <laughs> and Shohei showed out. There's some great little stories behind the scenes before the, the strikeout happened. So a really good, really fun tournament. Jolie loved it, mm -hmm. so it was a good show. All right, so check out No Bunts. We got No Buffs. That's our Survivor Recap podcast. That's coming tomorrow. That goes live at 1 p.m. Eastern with a special guest here in the factory. Survivor 43's Owen Knight is swinging by to talk about tonight's Survivor episode. And uh, what else we got? Well, we got Is This Good with Matty O, JD, and special guests talking about what things in this big old world are in fact good. <laughs> And we are re-releasing re Fast Friends each weekend here on the feed as we get ready for Fast X. So uh, what do we got? Tokyo Drift? Tokyo Drift. Coming that's this right, weekend yeah. to your podcast. No, no, no. That's in the feed right now. Tokyo Drift, right? Too no, fast, too, too fast, furious. Too, oh, you were right. Weekend. Too many podcasts. You're not going to be able to keep track. <laughs> I can't Because I can't. And I have yeah. it all in front of me. <laughs> no dinks, no bunts, no buffs. Is this good? Fast Friends. And of course, no dunks. And let's get into that because we have a new live show alert. Ooh. It's official, finally. Thanks to our friends at Neutral, we are going to be live in Houston Monday, April 3rd for a live podcast. Yes, the day of the Final Four NCAA Men's Championship game. 6 p.m. local time there in Houston. Doors at 5. We're going to be downstairs at the White Oak Music Hall in Houston. Looks like a really nice venue. Yeah. And here's the best part, guys. Tickets are free. Neutral said, they're on us, baby. <laughs> uh, so you do have to go to the Ticketmaster link. No fees, though, included. Uh, just to make sure that you're on the list. So you got to get your ticket, but it's not going to cost you a thing. So that 
um, link to uh, the Ticketmaster live show for our Houston pod is uh, there in the show notes. So come on out Monday, April 3rd in Houston. Doors at 5, show at 6. Just in time to see the championship game yeah. after. So right. um, if you're a Houstonian, come. Mm-hmm. Also, if you're a Houstonian or a Texan, much like when we went to Salt Lake City, we need some kind of cultural things from Houston to talk about uh, during the live show. We'll do an up-down report, of course. So, you know, we already know about chopped and screwed music. Yep. What else is there in Houston? Let us know. I know Destiny's Child. That's where they're from. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah. I, th- I think I'm Shang from- Wang, I think, as well. Grew is up he? on the same street. Oh, as, uh, huge uh, yeah. thumbs up. Doesn't he say that in, a, in his special yeah, recently? You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. So, uh, yeah, this... Not an April Fool's joke at all, either. April 3rd, we're in Houston. I know it's coming together last second, but that's okay. uh, Because first off, the tickets are free, and then you can come hang with us there and watch a live podcast. Should be fun. Um, So get your tickets. Okay. Let's get into the actual show here. That was a lot of housekeeping. Apologies for that. Um, Some sad news from the NBA world yesterday. Willis Reed, two-time champion and basketball Hall of Famer. He passed away at the age of 80. Uh, for those youngins out there, he was the undersized center but emotional leader of the New York Knicks for a decade. They called him the captain, five-time All-NBA selection, seven-time All-Star, winner of two finals MVPs, and he was named the NBA's 1969-70 regular season MVP. That number 19 Reed jersey hangs in the Madison Square Garden Rafters, um, but he probably is best remembered by that inspiring performance in Game 7 of oh, the yeah. 1970 Finals. An iconic moment in sports. And that moment still lives today, yeah. 53 years ago. There's a, a handful of moments that live on in NBA lore. Mm-hmm. That is clearly one of them, even if it was in black and white. Him coming out of the tunnel, his interview with Howard Cassell being emotional. Uh, yes. So, uh yeah, thoughts to his family and mm-hmm. to uh, to, yeah, to, uh, to everybody who, who lived through that New York Knicks era. That was an incredible era. The last great era for the New York Knicks. Championship era, for sure. That might be the greatest New York City sports moment of all time. It's definitely up there. Uh, and certainly the most iconic moment of Willis Reed's career, especially capping the end of his 1970 season where he became the first guy to win All-Star regular season and finals MVP yeah. in the same year. Super impressive. Michael Jordan called him the most competitive player that he's ever seen. And Michael Jordan is the most competitive player most guys have seen. So pretty cool tributes uh, from a lot of the NBA family yesterday. Thoughts and prayers to his family, no doubt. Yeah. For those that don't know the story, for some reason, he had like a a thigh muscle injury in game five of that 70 finals. This is Knicks Lakers. He tumbles to the court in pain. He's forced to sit out game six. Wilt goes bonkers, uh, drops 45 and 27 in an easy Lakers win in game six, forces that deciding game seven at Madison Square Garden. His status completely unknown, even to his teammates going into game seven. They had no idea if Willis Reed's going to play. And they're both warming up, all the squads out there on the floor, and Reed comes out of the tunnel. And that's when we get a very young, you know, Marv Elbert uh, on the call. And here comes Willis, and the crowd is going wild. And then he starts the game scores New York's first two baskets uh, and he's like limping up and down the floor only points he scores in the game but he did manage to play like 27 minutes and of course they win he sort of energized the crowd his teammates and they they pull out that game seven victory scared Wilt Chamberlain yeah that's what they say in pregame he's like whoa is he really gonna play right right shaking in his boots it's pretty crazy to think them winning the 70 finals and the 73 finals the Knicks with Willis Reed like he prevented Jerry West from winning possibly two more and Will Chamberlain from possibly winning two more. Those were both against the Lakers. And then on top of that, the one Jerry West wins is in another finals against the Knicks in a season that Willis Reed only played 11. He was injured for a majority of the season. So it's crazy just what if. Um, you know, Jerry West, obviously considered one of the greatest of all time. Same with Will, but you throw more championships on those resumes, it's even like they're even higher in some people's minds. But because of Willis Reed and the Knicks, uh, they get those too. So crazy stuff there in the early 70s. Yeah, send our best to the uh, Willis Reed family and the entire NBA community. Let's get into a little true or false. Yeah, we'll continue with sort of uh, bad news here because Clippers all-star Paul George left last night's loss to OKC late in the fourth quarter after suffering an apparent right leg injury. PG goes up for a rebound. His, His right knee collides with Lou Dort's leg, and then he lands very awkwardly, and it looks like he hyperextends his knee. Uh, he crumples to the floor there, you see. Stayed down for several minutes. They finally get him off. Um, he's seen left leaving the arena. 
in a cart, right leg extended. I mean, this is gross. I know. Should have gave a little warning on that. Uh, you see that knee sort of going backwards. Clippers have not offered an update yet as of uh, going live here around 10, 15 a.m. Eastern time on the Wednesday. But the question, the true or false question off of this, uh, Tass, after this PG leg injury, and fingers crossed it's not that crazy. Mm-hmm. It looks bad. But true or false, Clippers have now zero chance of winning a title if uh, this PG injury is as scary as it looks. If it's severe, if he's not back this postseason, I would say they do not have a chance. Let's let's be completely honest. He's that good. And he looked pretty good in this game. Yeah. He threw down a couple dunks. It looked like old PG with the 360 dunk and one earlier. And then it looked pretty innocuous from the, the regular live broadcast camera angle where you couldn't see that his knee went back. And then you saw the replay from the baseline cam where you're literally looking at the side of his leg. And it goes back because uh, Lou Dort just happened to run into it because Paul George was sort of landing on one leg. It looks bad, but he is such a key piece. I know this team is extremely deep, and I talk about it, that they can run out two units. But it's way different when you're relying on... You're you're asking the best of so many guys on that team. You're asking Batum to be phenomenal now. You're asking up and down the roster guys to play at peak performance when you don't have Paul George. It's way different. They can't so get to that chance. level. Yeah. I don't think so. What do you think, Trey? Yeah, uh, I agree. If Paul George isn't as good as he looked in the first half last night, the Clippers do not stand a chance. They have a very deep team, but when it comes to actually winning championships, it's all about your stars playing well and showing up when it matters the most. Kawhi has ramped things up in the past couple of months. He's playing incredibly well. I agree. Paul George looked great last night. A 360 in a half-court set. Yeah. That's incredible. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. But to see him go down with just a really bad luck injury, like not a hard hit from Dort, just kind of in the wrong place to throw him off his balance and have a tough landing, kind of like the knee version of accidentally stepping on a guy's foot is really what that was. Yeah, bummer uh, for L.A. to see Paul George go down like that and uh, just a random sort of injury. But, yeah, if he's not healthy, uh, they're not going to win the championship. Yeah, he had 18-7, 5, and 3 steals in 35 minutes before he left the game there with the injury. He threw down the 360 in the half court. You don't see that often. Um, but, yeah, this is a devastating loss to, to the to Clippers. They were playing really good basketball recently, too. They had won 5 of 6 before losing last night to the OKC. And here's PG. He only played 30 games or so last year because of the uh, elbow injury. He had a knee injury earlier this season. Now this, what appears to be another knee injury, um, it's it's a bummer. I know they're getting Norman Powell back, I think, soon. Of course, that helps. That but helps. You can't replace PG both offensively and then what he gives for them defensively, too. I mean, you can put Paul George a lot of the time on the better perimeter player on the other team, and he can at least sort of contain them. So this sucks. We'll wait to see how uh, severe it is. <laughs> Again, that didn't look good at all, um, especially with how long he was down and – getting carted off and stuff like that once they got into the tunnel and then leaving the arena. Uh, let's talk about the uh, late-game defense from Lou Dort, though, on Kawhi Leonard. Uh, I know you saw that, a one-point game, basically the full shot clock to operate with, balls in Kawhi hands, in his hands, and Lou Dort <laughs> just would refuse to be switched off of him, fighting over screens and just locking his ass up. I mean, that was pretty impressive. Absolutely. You don't usually see Kawhi sort of uh, fade from his move. He didn't go straight up and straight down. He kind of faded, and he was pretty upset with himself. You don't see Kawhi mad quite often after a game. And it just seemed like Lou Dort took him out of his his motion, took him out of his uh, straight up and down move, his flow, changed it right mm-hmm. there. And he apologized to everybody after the game that you know he kind of took the ball up and you know, made it all about him on that play. But really, it was just incredible defense. Did Lou- he say he took too long? He, yeah, I he think took, he was he, he was upset with long. that as well. They got the rebound with 21 seconds left. They tried to get the switch. It wasn't happening because solid defense by Dort. He was obviously right on him, but they kept trying to get the switch, kept trying to get the switch, and then it became Kawhi trying to create a good look with three seconds left. Yeah. That's tough against any defender, let alone a guy like Lou Dort. I think he just took too long trying to get the perfect matchup, wanting to attack Giddy. Should have just went right to the hoop or right into his mid-range jumper. He can get that over Dort, but... Awesome by Dort to stick with him. Oh, absolutely. Because they were trying to get, like, Giddy switched onto him. And, yeah, Dort was fighting, fighting over tops of screens to stick with Kawhi out on the perimeter. Just overall in general, too, like, not even Kawhi, but the Clippers, like, Lou, like, 
shouldn't they just be going a lot earlier in that situation? You're down one with, like, what'd you say? Like, basically, 20 when seconds. They, they yeah. get the rebound with 21 seconds left. That's a weird decision to, like, in the end, wait to, like, go for the win right at the end. Uh, because you go 10 seconds left, you shoot and miss even, a contested shot, maybe you get the rebound. Of course, maybe the foul is called. Maybe the Thunder grabs the rebound, and then you foul them even, and you could still have a chance. They miss one. Even if they hit both, you're down three. It's like you sort of want to give yourself a couple bites at the apple, I think, in that. I got it. You got Kawhi, but being down one, tied, I get. You know, worst case, you go to overtime. Down one, I thought that was a little strange, but awesome, awesome defense, and a big win here from OKC. Shea Gilders Alexander, incredible again. Jalen Williams, incredible again, and then and Dort locking him up there at the end. Yeah, Shea traded for Paul. Once upon a time, yeah. part of that package. Jalen too. Just, right. Yeah, part of that deal. That was a hell of a haul. Um, so they obviously did well. Maybe just Kawhi's just upset because of his bro. Just couldn't get out of his mind. But the entire game, I thought they kind of played a little slow. Mm-hmm. And that's what they're they're sort of known for. But Tyloo wanted, wanted them to speed it up a little bit. And uh, Westbrook was great coming out of the gate. Maybe they're just happy they got up 18-4 in this game and then kind of laid off a little bit. But... Yeah, just all I'm thinking about is this is year four for this run here with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. They've only been healthy in the playoffs for one of them, and that was the first one, and that was the the 3-1 comeback by the Denver Nuggets in the bubble. So it stinks. One of four seasons if Paul George isn't able to come back. Mm -hmm. Um, And also, I know we've been talking about the refs, but the refs went too far. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. That was that, (laughs) that was. That was absurd. It was a little Scotty Barnes-like at first. You know, with Scotty Barnes' issue with uh, Scott Foster, everybody wondering what the hell happened because Kawhi Leonard, end of the second quarter, simply clapped. And it wasn't even a clap. He, was, he says nothing. He got a tech. Mm-hmm. And Terrence Mann basically was speaking up for Kawhi, like, what is happening? Why are you giving him a tech? And got tossed immediately. Yeah. That was quick. The consistency is what players have a problem with. Yeah. And when you've got such quick whistles a quick pull you're ejected for talking essentially like Terrence Mann was upset sure but he wasn't too too quick text like that that was that was a little much I'm not going to say the referee's name because we don't need to know his name but it was a young official making a young mistake yeah (laughs) Yeah, that that was a rough one for Clippers fans don't clap (laughs) that was they're getting you I mean they they are consistent with that a referee hates to be clapped at (laughs) both Kawhi and Terrence Mann they did a clap just like Spencer Dinwiddie he did a clap once upon a time deal with it Clap. It's just clapping. That, yeah. That's like a frustration thing. Yeah. Also, Single. Kawhi Leonard 100% got fouled. <laughs> that yeah. was guaranteed a foul on the reach, and I think it was Trey Mann grabbed his left arm, but Trey Mann weighs like 130 pounds, so it wasn't a problem for Kawhi. He finished right through it. He clapped, and then Terrence Mann said, hey, he just clapped. Then he got a tech, <laughs> then he said well, something that he yeah, shouldn't have said. Yeah. Then he got tossed. Yeah. But, man, what's the big deal? It's just clapping. <laughs> <laughs> just clapping. Clap. Okay. Everybody loves to do it. OKC is now in the seventh seed. This is wild. Uh, it goes Clippers, Warriors, 5-6, and then Thunder in the seventh spot, basically tied there with the Mavericks in the eighth seed, and then it's Wolves and Jazz, a half game behind them, the Lakers and Pelicans, a full game behind the Thunder and Mavericks. What a season for OKC here, and uh, you know all these games are playoff-like, and so this is great experience for a lot of their young guys. And Man, the way they've been playing – over the last week or so, they're feeling like they are at least a play-in team and are going to have a chance to try and get in the playoffs. Good, good win uh, from them last night. Uh, but, yeah, obviously we'll find out probably later today from uh, the Clippers about Paul George and the extent of that injury. Moving on, Donovan Mitchell had a couple highlight real plays, part of a 31-point night in the Cavs' win over the Nets. Biggest was uh, this fast-break slam over Yuta Watanabe early in the fourth. Now he caught the replay back in the locker room. Uh, and Mitchell was asked, you know, or told from his teammates, this may have been your best ever. Best dunk ever. And Mitchell said, uh, it's up there. I don't know if it's my best one. It's definitely up there. Uh, Watanabe on the uh, receiving end of this one. So true or false, last night's jam there on Watanabe. <laughs> was that the best dunk of Donovan Mitchell's career, Trey Kirby? I'm with Mitchell on this one. I think it's false, but I do think it's up there. I yeah. saw the NBA today posted a video. 56 minutes of Donovan Mitchell's best career dunks. 56 minutes. That's a lot of dunks. That's a lot of dunks. Yeah. This dunk is the thumbnail. Oh, yeah. Is I mean, that SEO? <laughs> yeah, or maybe. is that the best dunk? I don't know. To me, Utah Watanabe, 
uh, Jakob Pertl. These are kind of like entry level posters. Once you dunk on them, then you can move up sure. to the next level. So maybe that's why Donovan Mitchell doesn't think this is be- his best dunk. Most of his best ones, usually a wide open lane. He's gotten a few decent bigs. JaVale McGee, Vucci Baby, Maxi Kleba are the biggest guys basically that he's dunked on. My personal pick, he's got a tip dunk against the Rockets in the playoffs where he like brings the ball in to the lane, shoots it, misses, grabs it oh, off yeah. two feet and slams it down. Capella nearby. He almost dunked on Embiid, but Embiid really blocked the shot. Somehow it still went in. <laughs> so I don't think it's necessarily number one from Donovan Mitchell, but man, that was maybe the best dunk of this season. Oh, it was big. For any player. And man, it, very similar, I thought, to the Anthony Edwards dunk on Utah Watanabe as well, the way he... Fights him off with the with the off arm and cocks it way back with the other one. Yeah, Watanabe had that Anthony Edwards dunk in his head, I think, when Mitchell dunked on him because he looked at him immediately. Usually you'd see a guy kind of walk away after getting dunked on like that, but he looks right at Mitchell. Yeah, two posters for Watanabe being on the wrong side of him, oh. unfortunate. But he got back, turned it over, got back on defense because he went after it. But Mitchell's... Bag of 56 minutes, which is incredible. This is an edited clip. This isn't like a 56-minute, uh, you know, long, long clips there that the NBA put together. He's got a lot of dunks. Uh, that is, is a ton of them. A lot of them are, you know, the 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 reach back monsters. Quite often on on guys, they look similar. So I think the playoff one is different looking when you look at all of them. Uh, I like the JaVale one. It looks cool in the Utah in the in the forty five. That's those, the, the biggest colors. guy he dunked on for sure. Yeah, that's in, the best body to body one. It's an it's a it's pretty. I it's forgot pretty. to grab it with this dunk last night, but there is an iconic photo. Like a photographer got this one at the exact moment where he's at his apex, cocking this ball back, dunking on Utah Watanabe. It looks awesome. Always like a nice, you know, Getty image to pair with the dunk that's just captured perfectly. So that was huge. But I think you guys are right, and I think Mitchell's right. Not his best, but holy crap, it's on the short list. But also 56 minutes. I hate to be a Matt Austin about it, but let's edit that down. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> that's long. You man. don't need it that long. Like I you could excited. have a tight 15 even, and that's very long. Uh, great. Don't, don't worry. There's tight 15s out there okay, for okay, you good. as well. But I'm the, I'm the same. I was like, I saw this dunk. I saw the question. I was like, all right, I gotta gotta refresh <laughs> myself. Best Donovan Mitchell dunks. 56 <laughs> minutes. I gotta be to work in 56 minutes. Yeah, that's too much, man. That is just because they do a lot of that. I notice the NBA on their YouTube page. It's like, you know, a Luca, Luca will hit a game winner. I'll be like, an hour and 20 minutes of Luca's all game winners. You're like, oh my god, I don't need to see all of them. Tell me the top 10. Give me the best. Uh, do some for, parsing. That's for people who have YouTube on in the background. Just put it on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're uh, probably something right. for everybody. Yeah, you're There's right. probably 56 minutes cut down into one minute for a short. Okay. Okay. A dunk a second. Huge dunk. Uh, <laughs> good win here by the Cavs. Nets made it close. Um, any thoughts on the actual game and, and Cleveland picking up this win? Uh, I think they play again on Thursday night, uh, these two teams, Cavs and Nets. Cavs are basically locked into fourth place. I mean, it's getting you know pretty apparent that's where they're going to be. This is going to be their first playoff berth without LeBron James on their roster since 1998. <laughs> uh, so that's Terrell wild. Brandon days. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the Nets are two and a half back of the Knicks for fifth. And they're only half a game ahead of the uh, Miami Heat there, who are in seventh. Yeah, I don't think the Knicks are the team they need to be keeping tabs on here because the Heat are coming and yeah. the Nets have lost four straight and they are really up and down. Like for as much as we talk about the good games Mikhail Bridges has, he'll also have a nine for 20 mm-hmm. where you're like, okay, he is struggling a little bit with the efficiency here. Quite likely Brooklyn ends up in the play-in tournament, I think. Uh, from the other side, I like the Cavs and what they were doing around Mitchell and Garland. I thought they had some nice bounce. You could see why the Cavs were fine letting Kevin Love go. Evan Mobley is their backup center, and he got some minutes there. As the starting center with Jared Allen out, eye contusion, Jared Allen back. And you could see with Garland and Mitchell handling the ball how well Evan Mobley is working off the ball. Beauty baseline cut, beauty alley-oops, just working off them so well, scoring the paint with the lefty hook. He was going one-on-one. He hit a three. And he showed when he was a center as a starter, he's getting physical. So uh, that was a, a just a, a really well-rounded win mm-hmm. against a good Nets defense. Garland and Mitchell doing their thing. and Mitchell scoring 31. Garland, incredible chemistry with Mobley. And even if you had an Isaac no score you had enough from Allen and Karis LeVert. You could see the, the makeup of their win. Karis LeVert is putting together a nice little stretch here for his season. He's averaging over 18 points per game on nearly 55% shooting over his last six. And he's having his best three-point shooting season of his career. 
Karis LeVert is right now. He's flirting with about 38% from deep, so good timing here. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was really solid. He's been really good for them over the last little bit. Final one. Jason Tatum scored 36. Celtics ended a long road trip on a high note, beating the Kings 132-109 to last night. Boston bounced back from blowing that 19-point lead in Utah on Saturday by knocking off one of the better teams in the Western Conference. Beantown Boys won four of the six on their last real road trip here, being a lengthy one. So true or false, Task get us started. That was the best the Celtics have looked in months last Ooh, night. Months. In victory. Yeah. Months, many months. months. True for short term because I forget everything. Uh, you know, beyond the <laughs> beyond a month, I'd say last month, of course, that that they looked wonderful, and to me, it just shows you can just throw out some some parts of the regular season with great teams. I know we always worry. We've worried about the Celtics multiple times, or thought about maybe they're back to that team at the beginning of last season where they're not consistent. It's the season's long, and I think it, I think they're totally fine. They. Yeah, we're just really, really well rounded in this game. Sim- simply put, I think they just there's there's worries. Like, is Malcolm Brogdon going to find his role again? Uh, Robert Williams is he going to stay healthy? What, what's up with Tatum? Not a problem. Mm. I don't think. You think they looked more like the Celtics that started this season last night? There, yeah. that yeah, offense humming well, along. The the Celtics that looked like November, December, January, February, really. It, it, they haven't looked good since the All Star break, I guess. Yeah. This, but that's about it. Okay. Me. What'd you think, TK? Uh, I will say the best they've looked in month. Good. One month. Because they beat the 76ers in Philadelphia February 25th. That's the night that uh, Joel Embiid hit the 75-footer, like a split second a little too late. Yeah. They also beat the 76ers at home in early February. They hit 19 threes in that one. But this, I did think, was one of the better games that the Celtics have played, period, this season. They hit 18 threes and had five or six turnovers can't decide which yeah. one it is sometimes you're seeing five i know sometimes you're seeing six <laughs> nonetheless 45 times they've hit 15 or more threes this season but that's only the eighth time all year they've had single digit turnovers they also forced 14 turnovers from the kings and won the rebounding battle against a really solid rebounding team yep. nice to have robert williams back but i just thought the celtics did such a good job of touching the paint multiple times every single possession driving and kicking then the ball was pinging around the outside. They had a ton of assists, made a bunch of three-pointers. And then on the defensive end, they were switching everything. And it was definitely taking the Kings out of their actions. And they seemed to frustrate DeMontis Sabonis a little bit, despite the fact he ended up with a triple-double. Once again, still turned the ball over quite a bit. And I heard Mo DeKeel talking on the Daily Ding earlier today that this is the kind of defense the Kings are going to see yep. once it actually comes playoff time. So we'll see actually how they handle it once they're playing in the biggest games that any of these guys have ever play in but nice stuff from the Celtics they didn't let up they didn't blow a lead and they didn't botch it in the fourth quarter because they didn't really have to play the fourth quarter yeah no for sure I like this game as like a measuring stick for the Kings in a weird way because both of these teams the Celtics and Kings this season they they'll play high tempo games right we know that like both teams last night shot better than 50 percent from the field better from 40 percent from three but the difference between these two squads is one the Boston Celtics can play some defense they will slow you down this the Kings I know they've had decent fourth quarters before in clutch situations where they finally get some stops, but overall, this is what they need to add here. Some timely defensive stretches, and you're going to win a ton of games. Not that they haven't, but like you're going to win more and be considered like an actual championship contender, and that to me was like the huge difference maker here. Time Lord being back, really nice. You know, 21 minutes he played. You could see his impact. And then Tatum and Brown, both you know, 36 and 27 respectively, those guys as stars. So good win there from the Celtics to end that long road trip. It was the final one, like I said. Now they go back, and they got a couple more road games, but a lot of them are left at home as they get ready for the playoffs. Uh, other three games last night, I'll chuck them at you. Trey Young scored 30. Hawks completed the sweep of the Pistons. Bancaro scored 18 as the Magic beat the struggling Wizard- Wizards by 10. And then Ingram scored 32 in three quarters. Pelicans topped the Spurs. Any notes on those three games involving, let's be honest, the Pistons, Wizards, and Spurs, some bad teams? <laughs> The Magic's record is getting pretty close to the Wizards' record after <laughs> after beating them. That's true. Uh, <laughs> That's actually true. Yeah. yeah, the thirty they've hit the thirty win benchmark. It's a solid number for a team that didn't have playoff aspirations coming to the season. You always you always at the end of the season want to see that number in the thirties rather than the twenties. Yeah. So a good one there in the uh, the Mo Wagner revenge game against uh, his old team. Uh, the quick comments here, Pistons playing the Hawks. Hawks took care of business. A, a true basketball non-fight at the end of that one. Jaden Ivey. <laughs> this is some good nonsense here. Yeah, the, the the absolute definition 
of what people say basketball fights are. <laughs> right. Jalen I uh, Jaden Ivey shot, shot clock was off. It's a blowout. It's over. <laughs> and it seemed like it was over after the game too, because no one really coming up to him. But John Collins kind of coming up to him. And <laughs> Somebody's got to say something. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> so, like, so weird. I mean, weird shot by Jaden Ivey, to be quite, yes, to not be quite honest. Also weird how the game ended, but there was still time on the shot clock, even though the like the game clock had gone off. So nobody really knew if the game was <laughs> finally over. You've got Trey Young saying. Go away. Trey Young and DeAndre Hunter are like, go away, Ivy. Just go to your side of the court. Meanwhile, John Collins is walking up to confront him. His team won by 22. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> it was just complete nonsense. But shout out to the Hawks getting back to 500. Yep. Now they have a choice between winning or losing the That's next right. game. That's right. So what, 26 in a row now? Where I they've think been it's with the longest on one time game? now officially. A 500. Yeah, I was tied for first. Oh, they were tied. They were they tied were, for was first, confirmed. and I think it's officially them now. Wow, way to go, Hawks. Yeah, back to 500. Uh, any other thoughts? Ingram, dominant there against the Spurs in a blowout. Yeah, Ingram back to his old ways. Uh, he's got to be great <laughs> these next few weeks if the Pels want to make the play-in tournament. He just has to step up and be him. Mm-hmm. So a good sign. He's he's a flow kind of player. If he's in his flow, then hopefully they can make it. Uh, just quick comments. I liked uh, Dwayne Casey's comment about trading away Sadiq Bay to the Atlanta Hawks, who they were playing. He said it was a tough decision for our organization. He's a beautiful person, beautiful man, and did all the right <laughs> things. Beautiful person and a beautiful man. Love it. Uh, Jalen Duren sitting out of that game with cervical whiplash. After uh, being in a collision with Kevin Lovett, but it was called cervical whiplash. Wow, you wow. don't see that one. You don't see that he often. Got blasted. Like, he huh? just must have got hit. It's Ugh. like that's how I feel boxing out Trey Kirby. I mean, it's like <laughs> it's it's, it's a lot. Cervical whiplash. Cervical whiplash. I think that's a technical term. And uh, here, so here's some sicko stuff. Okay. We're going a little deep here, but here we go. I'm okay with it. Keegan Murray of the Sacramento Kings, jumping back there, hit a three-pointer, gave him at least a three in 33 straight games. Nice. Tying the NBA rookie record. Have you seen this record? Did you see this record? I only, saw, I only saw one of the names he tied. Okay, so he tied two guys. Okay. For ro- for rookies hitting a three in consecutive, consecutive games. games. Oh my That's God. right. One I saw some... He's about to break the record. It's a guy who maybe when all of your clothes are dirty, you need to do this. <laughs> I need to wash them. <laughs> yep. Slight, a slight How play on that. Them? How do you wash them? Where, <laughs> yeah. where do you, where store do you them? wash them? Yeah. Where do you store where do you them? Store where do I the store clothes? them? Yeah, but it's oh, a play on that. call it a hamper. A hamper, yeah. Or a... <laughs> I wish I, I wish you didn't give me these hints. No, I probably would have just got it thinking of basketball It's a great hint. It's a great, nah, hint. It's it's a a hard great guy to clothing think of. Related, related hint. Yeah, it's hard to think of. Notable name. Uh, I'm yeah, really struggling journeyman. with another name for a hamper. I don't know why. Some what? call it a laundry basket. Okay. Yeah, it's one of those words. Mm-hmm. A laundry basket. <laughs> La- laundry shamit. Yeah. You guys, that's brutal. I've never uh, laundry. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. I don't remember Jesus. the second one. I don't remember the second, second one. one. Second one you'll never get. Okay. What year? 08. 08, 09. 08, 09. And we'll never get it because... Now well, you just... Steve Novak? No, I guess because... Sometimes it's hard thinking of international players as rookies. Oh, I suppose. okay, that's a nice hint. That's yeah. a hint. It's laying it out there for you. It's any relation to a household task. <laughs> <laughs> Pablo Prigioni. Uh, a, uh, there was a. I got sitcom. it. I got it. I got it. Go I think I got it. Oh eight, oh nine. You said is that yeah. right? Rudy Fernandez. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Nice. Yeah. One. Made up for my laundry nice shamit. There was a. <laughs> No house, yeah, no household task. But there was a, a sitcom that had the name House in it, that had a character who had a tagline. House in it, Full House. Yeah. Tagline that had a word that's very similar to Rudy. Full House tagline. Very. How, si- how Rudy? Yeah. There you go. Could have got there. How hey man, Rudy? Cut it out yeah. for that joke. All right, let's take a break, man. We need one. Uh, and when we come back, we're gonna hit the beach to answer a few of your questions. Don't go anywhere. The last few years have changed how we do things in the Mellis household. And that includes how much we go out to eat. 
We eat a lot more at home, especially when it comes to meat. Why go out when ButcherBox delivers high quality meat and fish to our door? We like how ButcherBox delivers in bulk and it's all frozen. So we just pull out what we need and have lots more in the freezer for other days. Like when we grilled chicken thighs one night mm. or made schnitzel from their chicken breast another night. Or when we had ButcherBox's chicken wangs for Super Bowl. And that's free range organic chicken mind you and there's a lot of variety it provides inspiration nightly for danielle not for me she's the chef that's it's not my department the variety includes a hundred percent grass-fed beef pork raised crate free and wild caught seafood oh plus the ground turkey we used to make turkey meatballs which had a whole lot of spinach in them they were delicious kids love them too it's all humanely raised no antibiotics or added hormones free shipping and good prices. And here's a deal. You're going to like this one, Skeets. Get free chicken nuggets for a year and 10% off your first box when you sign up today. That's a 22-ounce bag of gluten-free chicken nuggets in every order for a year <laughs> when you sign up at ButcherBox.com slash NoDunks and use code NoDunks. 22-ounce bag of chicken nuggets. That's a lot of nuggets. I couldn't believe this when I saw it. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I was I like, is this a typo? No. That's probably, nuggets for a year. Let's that's, go. That's probably 100 nuggets in a bag. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, that's uh, but that's a lot of nuggets. Yeah. Every time you order. Claim this deal at butcherbox.com slash no dunks and use code no dunks. All right, guys, let me paint you a picture. You're at the supermarket, right? Yeah. You made a quick run to grab some food for a little weekend barbecue. You're running through your mental checklist. Do we have buns at home? Are we low on ketchup? How many bags of chips should I get? And then you see the text little ding ding there on your phone what's it say hey love invited a bunch of the neighbors over grab wine please oh boy mm. here we go now i'm going through the wine aisle feeling lost feeling intimidated i don't know what to get i don't know how many bottles i don't know where to start if you've ever experienced something like that you need First Leaf. Here's why. As America's most personalized wine company, First Leaf takes the guesswork out of wine selection. It's so easy, and I need this. You just take their short taste quiz, and you rate the first few wines that they send you, and then First Leaf uses your responses to curate a customized selection of delicious, award-winning wines based on your personal preferences with, check this, 96% accuracy. You take that little taste test, you get your wines, mm -hmm. you give the feedback, and then they're knocking it out of the park test. 96% accuracy. A variety of new and exciting wines delivered to your door with each bottle price lower than what you would pay at the wine store. You even get to choose when to receive your wine, and every selection is backed by First Leaf's satisfaction guarantee. I am part of the uh, First Leaf monthly wine club membership. I love it, because I honestly, I don't like, I feel like overwhelmed when I'm in the uh, the wine aisle. I don't know, I, they all look good. <laughs> Get them all is what I say. <laughs> but uh, this helps out. It makes uh, shopping for high quality wine affordable, pretty fun and very easy. So sign up today and you'll get your first six bottles for $39.95 plus free shipping. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash no dunks. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F.com slash no dunks to get your first six bottles for $39.95 plus free shipping. Try firstleaf.com slash no dunks. Here's what I love about doing this show live. We mentioned Rudy Fernandez and then the stream team just goes nuts. Sharing Rudy Fernandez memories and how he was good at alley-oop layups <laughs> and how he was in the dunk contest once. Oh yeah. And obviously oh. all those threes he made as a rookie. I he, love this stuff. He won a contest to get in the contest. That's right. <laughs> yes, he did. Did yeah. he beat NBA. Westbrook? NBA.com, yep. <laughs> then didn't he wear a Fernando Martin jersey that, or something that, in yeah, the dunk contest? Yeah, something along those lines. He was pretty good. Yeah, he wasn't bad. I think, he, did he do a behind the back toss? Yeah, he's white. Yeah, I did that dunk, huh? Yeah. Dunk in our dunk contest. You know what also Rudy Fernandez did was when he was with the Portland Trail Blazers, he had this three-pointers celebration. Oh, early. Yeah. Early adopter. With uh, like the three goggles, I think they called it. Mm. Should bring that back. That was a cool one. <laughs> Rudy yeah. Fernandez. Only played four years in the league, but obviously made a mark. That's it. It was Whoa. short looking at that. Surprising. He went back uh, to play in Europe. Surprising. Also, 
why we love doing this on this show is because we have stories of our own. Brent Barry, who was on our show, said Rudy Fernandez made him retire, essentially, because he was tired <laughs> running around screens <laughs> trying to guard Rudy Fernandez. Too much A energy. lot of work. Yeah. That's when he knew it was time to hang him up. Let's hit the beach. <laughs> A little beach stepping. It's been a while, but we are on the beach because it's the only place to read your emails and your tweets. And you guys were great at sending in a lot of these by way of Twitter yesterday. So our first one from Stetson Banks. Watching the NCAA tournament and the one and one free throws make things a little spicier when teams are fouling late in games trying to make a comeback. Would you be in favor of having one and one free throws in the NBA? Who wants to start this one? What do you think, Mr. Banks? <laughs> Mr. Banks. Stetson Banks, good luck in the upcoming NFL draft. Um, <laughs> my thoughts on this are, number one, less free throws is good. Yes. So this could <laughs> certainly help with that, but I don't know how it would work because in the NCAA they play halves, right? So they're counting free throws throughout the half, which I guess you get to six or seven, you're doing one and ones, and then once you get over ten or more, then you're shooting twos. Right. I don't know how that would work for the NBA. Once you get to three fouls, you get to shoot a one and one. That seems a little quick to me. Right. It's almost then we're getting two more foul shooting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're I think, to it earlier. And that's kind of what I'm getting at. I think yeah. that this would lead to more hack a shack kind of fouling because you're putting a bad free throw shooter to the line, assuming maybe they'll miss the first one right away. But even if not, once you get to ten fouls, you're like, fine, go shoot two free throws, miss two of them. So I would rather G League it. One free throw for two points the first 46 minutes of the game, and then you're shooting regular free throws the last two minutes. I was a fan of that, watching those G League yeah. games. That's what I was totally going to go with, the G League. Maybe it's for three quarters. Maybe it's for the first 46 minutes, and then you got to go regular. Yeah. But I don't think you see a lot of hack-a-shack with that rule as opposed to the one and one which you could because I don't think coaches are taking a chance with a guy going to the line for two points. Right, right, right. Because that – yeah, increase the likelihood of two points versus zero points. But it is fun just to watch one free throw. The game speeds up a lot yes. when watching a G League. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's now, a lot quicker. Yeah, now there's there's no way that they would change. They would implement a rule for three quarters or 36 minutes, or sorry, 46 minutes, and then change it, though. They do that right now. Yeah. In the G League. No, period. Uh, the NBA does that with, like, intentional foul. Oh, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I think they would. Intentionally foul. you think they'd have one type of free throw for – certain amount of minutes wow yeah just because oh, the intention yeah you know when you get down in the final couple of minutes when the game matters more in theory you know <laughs> you know <laughs> hit both your free throws yeah i think they would mm. and i think that's why they're trying it in the g league and seeing uh how fast it speeds up the game what impact it's having on the flow of everything the and then the deciding factor in the final two minutes going back to normal if you want to call it that i, I like that that i mean i hear what banks is saying or stetson saying about you know in the college game there is something nice about when teams are like trying to get back in a game and you have like that little window, like you said, where you just get the one and one. Like you got to hit that first one. And if they miss, then it allows that team that's trying to get back in the game a hell of an opportunity to try and chip away at a lead. So it does sort of work there until they get to that 10th foul to trigger, okay, you're just shooting both, but and not in the NBA. I'm sort of with you on that. NBA yeah. players are pretty good at drawing fouls these days. We're already seeing ridiculous free throw rates yeah. uh, I think Ziggy here is saying in the stream team that if they went to this Giannis would shoot 30 free throws a game and I think that's exactly what happened you would much rather take your chances with Giannis shooting 65% at the line than him shooting you know 80% at the rim <laughs> yes next one your favorite team is relocating to a new city that's never had an NBA team but it's current city is also getting a brand new franchise franchise so are you rooting for your old team in a new city or the new team in town. This is from MG. You got to wrap your head around this one, right? Yeah. So, so your favorite team. Let's just okay. Let's just it's, make it make it make it Atlanta. Give us an example, sure. Okay, sure, let's sure. make it Atlanta. Tass's favorite team, the Atlanta Hawks. They are relocating to St. Louis. They're going back. Sure. Right. Yes. <laughs> That's where they won their championship. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they might have some championship vibes. Their only championship in history. The okay. house that Bob Pettit built. Okay. Mm. Maybe that's not a good example because it should be maybe a place that's never had an NBA team. Okay. <laughs> Let's change it. The Atlanta Hawks. Seattle. Are moving to. <laughs> they are moving to. Kansas City. Stratford, Ontario. Calgary. No, Stratford, Ontario. Uh, but it's current city. This is the Hawks. You're getting a brand new franchise here. It's going to be the Atlanta. Thrashers. Thrashers. Yeah. 
<laughs> guys are really going to make this even more confusing. The Flames. Uh, Jersey. Are you rooting for that team that went to Stratford, Ontario, which was your Atlanta Hawks? Or are you cheering now for the team that is the Atlanta Thrashers slash Flames? <laughs> yeah, to make this even more convoluted, it's a little like what happened in Charlotte with the, the franchise coming in that was yeah, a call, new, right new franchise. Yeah. Versus, Are you cheering for the Bobcats or can you go cheer for the Hornets? Um you know, who eventually became the Hornets. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm going out of town. I'm going to the out of town team. Okay. Staying with my team. Okay, so you're cheering for the. I'm a loyalist. For the for the jersey, like the the mascot, the name of the actual yeah, particular NBA franchise. You get the, Not the, the city history. as much. Uh, the, yes, the problem with the new team is that it's a new team. It's going to suck probably to start <laughs> for a while. Right. But then, obviously, but huge you can positive. see them in yeah, theory. Yeah. Huge positive and be there for the ride. Mm. Okay, what are you doing? It all depends on where you live. It really does. Because if I'm in the current city, if I'm in Atlanta and the Hawks move away and they get a new team, I'm cheering for the new team because I'm here. But if it were the Chicago Bulls and they move <laughs> to Stratford, Ontario, I would still be a Stratford Bulls fan because you have the history. Well, because yeah. I got the history. So that's you're actually. The favorite team is the Chicago Bulls. It's not like the Hawks. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Sense. Yeah. But if I lived in Chicago and the Bulls moved away, I would just be a fan of the new team that came into Chicago. Right. Yeah. So it's uh, the hypothetical here would be Vancouver getting a brand new franchise. Are people going to have – did they remain even Memphis Grizzlies fans? Grizzlies fans because the team goes there. Mm-hmm. Or are they going to be now the new Vancouver – Vanguards. <laughs> no, that's a little different because it feels like your team's stolen from you in a they weird got way. Ripped. Yeah, that's tough. It's tough. What a question, MG. <laughs> yeah, I saw um, I saw some Cleveland Cavaliers fans looking sideways at Donovan Mitchell because he was wearing a Lamar Jackson jersey. Lamar Jackson plays for the Baltimore Ravens, who used to be the Cleveland Browns, and they were stolen away. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the Cleveland Browns have come back since. Yes. But we got a Cleveland guy wearing a jersey for a Baltimore Raven? That will not fly for Yeah, some fans. The, the <laughs> tricky part of this is that relocating part. That means some billionaire took your damn team from your city. Right? Yep. So you're going to be pissed at that particular person, that organization, I would assume. Mm-hmm. But then how quickly are you replacing it with a brand new franchise? How big is this window here? Is this a, yeah. like the team goes, are you going to do a team like the next season? Or is mm. it 5, 10, 15 years? That's another part of the equation. We should add another layer yeah, to yeah. this. <laughs> We've made this a lot yeah. deeper than it needed to be. No doubt. Uh, all right, next one here. TK, you get started. What uniform slash court combos are you most excited for for a potential playoff matchup that we're going to see? This is from SlamFam. It's a great question. Yeah. Got me excited. Got me excited to look at the playoff picture. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are a couple of intriguing matchups. However, we would need the Chicago Bulls to win the playoff, the play-in tournament for it to come to fruition because then, as of right now, Boston Celtics in the two seed, Chicago Bulls in the seventh seed. That's a good one. You're talking about two of the most classic uniforms in the NBA as long as the Celtics don't wear their diamond armpit jerseys, <laughs> which they wear a lot. Stick with the standard white and green or the green and white. Those are good to me. The Bulls will return the favor wearing their classic red and white or white and red. Okay. Keep it simple. Right. I would also love to see a Timberwolves Jazz play-in game where they both wear their neon jerseys. Oh, <laughs> yellow and green. Yellow and green. That'd be pretty wild. Put I don't think they would on. be allowed to do that. <laughs> I don't think I so. I think only, I guess the Timberwolves would be the home team right now since they're the nine seed, the Jazz are the ten. So I guess they could wear their green ones and the Jazz could wear their black ones with like the bright yellow on it. That would be very intense looking. <laughs> okay. and the other thing that I noticed, too much blue in the Western Conference. Go on. Nuggets, Clippers, Warriors, Grizzlies, Timberwolves, Thunder, Mavs. Those are all teams that are primary blue jerseys. Mm -hmm. Mix it up. What color would you like to see more of? Um, Okay, well, honestly, I think the Nuggets need a rebrand. I think the Clippers need a rebrand. I think the Warriors need to drop their little little (laughs) neckline sort of thing. But jerseys are fine. Uh, Thunder obviously need a rebrand. Mavs need a rebrand. Yeah, that's a lot. So yeah. I would change it up. I mean, okay. I like when I think blue teams. I guess the Mavs are the only team I really think of as a blue team. There, I don't know. Um, Even when you said Grizzlies, yeah. I was like, 
blue. And I'm like, eh, I guess it's a different type of blue. They well, got they got the, two blues. They got the baby blue and then the navy blue. Navy right. and Beale yeah. Street. Yep. Yeah. yeah, the Nuggets have their blue. Do the Clippers still wear their blue jerseys? Paul George was wearing one last night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were. Yeah, because they have a lot of black, but they are blue too. <laughs> yeah. Who would have thunk it? Just blew myself. Uh, <laughs> do you have a favorite potential matchup? Tap? Well, I guess I was thinking about Willis Reed and thinking about Madison Square Garden because I was thinking classic. I was thinking the Cavs could walk in there as a 4-5 into Madison Square wearing a little bit of blue, just a tiny bit of blue. Their land jerseys, their city edition jerseys, which are white, and you often see teams wearing white on the road. Mm-hmm. And those would stand out there, the white and gold, I think, with the Knicks wearing blue probably. Okay. okay. Let's hear from everybody We're going on classics. that one. Potential playoff matchups. Uniform, court combos. Who has the best court in the league? <laughs> Maybe even alternate court if you want to get funky with it. Well, that was actually on my list. Like, 76ers and the Nets are, could play each other. And they have they both could like go for similar looking oh, jerseys. Oh, yeah, like 70s, 80s <laughs> style. Yeah, like, yeah. I would say 60s and 70s even yeah. further back. Um, but, yeah, they could, if they commit to wearing their Americana jerseys, it might be confusing, but it would look nice on that plane floor. That would. Yeah. That would. That very minimalistic uh, Sixer store for sure. And the Nets do have that one too. All right, final one. Who is on your flashbang pop team? Okay. Guys who showed a flash of brilliance that for whatever reason stopped with a bang – but popped again later in their career. My examples, D. Rose after his injury or Mello after changing his mindset. Turn up, love you guys. Awesome. That's from Chad the Dad. I've never heard of the Flash Bang Pop team. <laughs> I thought That's the good. bang part's a little weird. Yeah. Right? Because, like, stopping with a bang? You don't really say that, do you? I stopped with a bang. <laughs> bang, I think, more of like stopped a... Stopped with a bang. A I starting, a I think, more than... Snap, crackle, pop. Just go Rice Krispies. The crackle in the middle to me is good. <laughs> the bang is too much. Yeah. Like the flash So bang instead pop. of flash bang pop, you just want snap crackle pop. Yeah, I think so. Because <laughs> what we're looking at is now I'm hungry. the beginning and the end to be big, right? You, yep, want, yep. you want a lull. I think snap crackle pop. Crackles, it's a crackle. But you snap it. Okay. Snap in a, anyways, or flash crackle crack pop. pop. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you got? Julius <laughs> Randall. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Oh, nice he had a one. He had, nice a, one. he had a flash bang pop, bang pop, because he had two lulls in his career. He went, yeah, yeah. He yeah. got he got up high, he started well, lull, most improved lull back. He's back to being awesome. So I think that's a current one that's super. It's good. a good one. Yeah, he went from you know, twenty one points a game down to nineteen, up to twenty four, down to twenty, up to twenty five this year. It's nice, I think. (laughs) (laughs) I agree with you. Uh, What do you got, Trey? I had Randall on my list as well. That's a, that's a, he's had a crazy career. Yeah, Yeah. played 14 minutes his rookie season. Remember, got hurt hurt. right away. Then looked like a journeyman, like Tass is saying. So he's Mm -hmm. kind of done it twice, and then sped run it the second time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All, all in the course of three seasons, we got the full, the full flashbang pop. A couple of other ones that uh, I think are good. Serge Ibaka. It's a good An one. early defensive player of the year candidate yeah. playing with the Thunder, led the league in blocks a couple of times, had that half season with Orlando, then he got traded to the Raptors. Raptors fans were not even the happiest with Serge Ibaka early in his Raptors uh, tenure, but then was key when yeah. he won the title and has remade himself as a guy who will cook you up a bull penis <laughs> if he wants to. <laughs> Another guy I got is Sean Livingston who came into the league as a lottery pick, struggled his rookie year, looked like he was putting to, putting it together, really highly recruited out of high school, suffered the injury, which was one of the grossest injuries you will ever see. Mm-hmm. Took him a while to get back to the NBA. Once he finally did, it kind of just became the story like, wow, look how cool it is that this guy is back doing anything in the NBA. Eventually, though, he became an instrumental reserve for the Warriors and won three titles with them as one of their vet dudes coming off the bench, hitting little pull-up 12-foot jumpers over anybody who's shorter than him. Great one. Good question, Chad the Dad. Let's hear from you guys in the stream team. Everybody listening later, tweet at us at NoDunkSync or uh, leave your comments there under today's show on YouTube. The Flash Bang Pop or the (laughs) Flash Crackle Pop or the Snap Crackle Pop. Hot, then not, then hot again. Tell us who we missed. We're going to take our final break when we come back. Pick them results and a very fun tweet of the night. You guys like real vodka? Yes. Mm. What about real juice? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Real seltzer? Only seltzer I 
intake. Right? Yeah, me too. <laughs> How about a real tweet? Because I got one for you. Okay. This was tweeted over the weekend from Bran Housen. Didn't we get shirts from Bran Housen one time? <laughs> oh, no, no, sorry. That's something totally different. <laughs> Showed up to the St. Patty's party with the lemonade pack umlaut. Umlaut. Wait, how do you say it? Umlaut. <laughs> umlaut yeah. or umlaut? One, I think one. it's umlaut. Yeah. Okay. Tomato, right. tomato. Yeah. In the yeah. stone cold igloo cooler. Now, look at this cooler. It's Stone Cold Steve Austin, 100% pure whoop-ass. <laughs> Say that again? Whoop-ass. Yeah, he definitely you never definitely, said it like that. He definitely pronounced that properly. <laughs> Hard H. And then we got a six-pack of the Lemonade Neutral. Uh, my favorite, actually. The Blackberry Neutral uh, Lemonade. Banks. I had one it yesterday. Hits, it's right? tasty. It's so good. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> Give me hell an yeah. umlaut. <laughs> I thought he was going to show up cracking two neutrals on the top of a car. <laughs> I would love to see that. <laughs> yeah. Do that one next, Bran House. No, oh, don't, waste don't waste yeah, it. Don't waste it. Yeah, don't wait. Well, you could sort of crack them and then just sort of yeah. be under it. <laughs> let it fall into your mouth. Neutral, man. Give it a try. Oh, my God. We ran out of music. Okay, we got to wrap this up. You know what the music they should use is? Oomlat, doop a dap dap doop a dap 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 Copyright on, a, on an ad now. Thanks, Tass. There's three different packs. Pineapple, watermelon, uh, raspberry, and mango. That's the fruit pack. Then we got the lemonade, classic, peach, blackberry, strawberry, lemonade. Uh, stra- sorry, strawberry, lemonade. <laughs> lemonade is the classic. And cranberry, classic grapefruit, apple, orange, cranberry. It's the ultimate seltzer upgrade with real vodka and a better taste. Check them out on Instagram at at neutral. <laughs> no umlaut there. Uh, find neutral in stores at your uh, favorite bar or learn more at neutralusa.com. Try neutral. The one with the umlaut. OKC, they were dogs in LA last night playing the Clippers. And they won outright. That Lou Dort defense at the end. The Dorcher Chamber, as they say, locking up Kawhi. I backed OKC, had some points to play with. Hit the win. I'm seven and eight. You guys had the clips. Task four and eleven. Trey falls to nine and six. So we're all over the map here in this month of March. What's tonight's game? The Suns at the Lakers. Some purple, some gold, some purple and gold. We'll see what happens in Phoenix tonight there. Or, I'm sorry, in Los Angeles tonight. Phoenix going in as a one-and-a-half point favorite. So, basically, a, a pick them there, Tess and Trey. We got the Suns. Skeezy got the Lakers yeah. at home. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tough one. Weird line. <laughs> a, little a, a bit of a strange line, I thought, with the Lakers almost in a straight-up pick them with the Suns. The Suns are reeling a little bit. Yeah, that's these why. These are big games for all these teams, especially the Lakers. The Suns have lost four or five, but the Lakers... Yeah, every single one is important, Mm -hmm. but which Lakers show up? Mm -hmm. Which one? We shall see. All right, let's get to Tweet of the Night. Mm, Tweet of the Night. Wow. Tweet. uh. Trey Kirby, what do you got for us? Got a good one, Skeets. This tweet comes to us from Front Office Sports at FOS on Twitter. News. After more than 20 years, Slam Ball is officially returning in July with a six-week regular season and one week playoff in Vegas. Oh, Slam ball man. is back! You love to see it. Honestly, I can't believe how excited people were for this. You, <laughs> yeah. said, you said it in the office, the factory, sorry, yesterday after the show. <laughs> hyped. <laughs> Sent the message to the, our Slack. Jerome said, we might have to stay in Vegas after Summer League. <laughs> I got multiple texts in group chats. People fired up. Mm-hmm. Murph slid through. Oh, wow. Big smooth slid through. Oh, we nice. were watching it back in the day, back when... The mob were winning championships. Back when the bouncers, the rumble, the slashers, the hombres, and the maulers were throwing down. Yeah, I've seen a Diablos game. I've seen a Steel game. The bandits, the riders. Who can forget these classic team names? My question for you guys. I'm guessing they're just going to relaunch this with the exact same team names, because why not? They should. Exactly. They should. Who are you going to cheer for? Because part of it's the nostalgia <laughs> factor. I mean, yeah, totally. Yeah, and then sell the merch, and people are going to be rocking bandit jerseys or whatever. Rocking bandit jerseys. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the last the last six teams that were around were the Bouncers, Mob, Rumble, Slashers, Ombres, and Maulers. Who do you think you're going to go for? Mm. I if Okay. It's been a long time. I feel like Rumble were green. Were they green and black? Whatever the green and black team is, I got a feeling it was Rumble, but I'm going for them. 
I forget I forget which one was green I and black. So. I looked at them all earlier yeah. today. I know the mob is red and black, so that's what I'm gonna pull for. Okay, that's red and black. You okay. said who? I think uh, I think it was um, Rumble's green and silver. Oh, green and silver. There you go. Okay, yeah, that's nice. what, okay. Thank you. So I'm going Rumble for that. Man. What kind, of, what kind of colors do you like? Yeah, colors, yeah. That's yeah. what we're, we're, we're <laughs> Pretty much. The at. bandits are orange, I think. Orange-ish. Bouncers, I'm seeing blue and orange. Uh, slashers. Oh, Slashers was a white and red. There was a, a really weird one. <laughs> Yellow and black, coached by Kenny Anderson. That's the hombres. They used to be the Diablos. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> And then the Maulers, they don't have a Wikipedia page. That's sad. Is Mason Gordon still playing? Mason Gordon? The guy that invented the game, I think? The creator of Slam Ball himself? Yeah. He must be old now. Yeah, he must be old. He was looking like he was in O-Town in 1999. So <laughs> you add another 20 years. How old is too old to play? How old is <laughs> to play Slam Ball, Slam Ball. It's described as a combination of trampolines, basketball, and football. football. I guess that's right. You, it's true. You forget right. about the football part. Oh, yeah. It's but physical. But you can straight out lay out a guy <laughs> when he's running up there. Yeah, I see some of the captions here on photos from Slam Ball calling it a confrontation Ooh. when a player tries to block another player. Confrontation yeah, between Rob Wilson Asian. and Kevin Cassidy. I think they got to go basketball lingo. What? Get the football out of it. It's more basketball than football. Yes. It's like got a hoop. Uh, <laughs> so so sell it that way, I think. I saw people wondering, is the game of slam ball going to be different because we have all these three-point shooters? People just going to be <laughs> chucking from 40 feet, mm. just trying to splash it. But then somebody wondered, could you goaltend in slam ball? Like could I could. could I just jump up on the trampoline and knock your shot away? You should. Yeah, it would obviously deter you from shooting forty footers <laughs> because I could just keep jumping up. I don't remember tapping. the rules. Yeah, I don't. I don't either. I my gut says there was no goaltending in a game where you could lay out guys in midair and on the ground. That'd be a weird little rule to have. I don't see anything about goaltending. Yeah, so I'm, okay. I'm, I'm guessing it's there. So here are some great scoring rules, though. Okay. And, and Mason Gordon is involved still. Well, yeah. Is oh, he yeah. playing? Oh, no I don't know if he's in play, if he's playing, but he he's somehow involved because he made an announcement that okay. it's coming back. Okay. I guess what it yeah. is. A successful score can be worth two points if the ball is thrown through the hoop without the offensive player touching the hoop. Slam dunks, however, are worth three points. Oh, touching the rim. Okay, okay, okay. All shots outside the three-point arc, also three points. Okay. Yeah. So they're they did sometimes shoot threes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the shooter, the slam ball shooter. Wow. Wow. Who could it be? The old heads are going to love this. <laughs> no three point shooting needed. Yeah, just go after it. Hombres, <laughs> bandits. <laughs> Jerome in our Slack channel right now said slam ball is a sport where load management would be reasonable. <laughs> it's a good point. Gotta agree. Very physical taxing, physically taxing, but. Uh, then again, it's only six weeks long and one week of playoffs. Only six weeks long, one week of playoffs. That sounds like seven podcasts for the summer. Yeah, that's that's what people slam also ball want. updates. So what's what's our what's the podcast called? No slams. <laughs> no jumps. No bounce. No confrontations. <laughs> no diablos. <laughs> <laughs> no dribbling? Do they dribble? No Mason Gordon? Do they dribble? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they dribble. Yeah, because there is yeah. court in between I'm the tramps. The That's highlights. the weirdest thing, the court part. I, I think that all... was always, to me, the coolest looking part. I, would le- I always wanted to, like, dribble down a portion of the court and then, like, yeah. then they leap in, obviously, under the tramps and try and dunk. I call them tramps for short, you know? <laughs> no tramps. <laughs> no tramps? Sure. <laughs> Out in the mix. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely, pumped. Definitely worth doing pumped. in the summer. I'll definitely be watching. Yes, this. at least to see what they change and the team names and oh, yeah, the, the new rules. injuries. I went to a fan-controlled football game here in Atlanta, <laughs> and it was fine. You know, I'm not the biggest football fan. Checked it out, but like this, hell yeah, I'm watching this. I'm, I'm hoping we might be in we might be in Vegas during summer league. When if it's the right timing, I would partake yeah. in a slam ball match. Goaltending is legal. If the shot attempt is from inside the tramp area. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So you, you can't the tramp goal zone. 10 three-point shots because those were inside the three-point area. That's a hack right there, Skeets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, these young kids are going to change the game of slam ball. It's never going to be safe. There's going to be no slamming. <laughs> uh, man, that's going to be sad if slam ball is the latest to go the money ball route. Yeah. Oh, man, these three-pointers are killing <laughs> slam ball. <laughs> There's no confrontations anymore. Back in my day, we used to confront guys left and right in the air. Oh, I love it. 
Also, yeah. Coach Carter was one of the coaches. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Coach Carter. Oh, Samuel Coach L. Jackson? Ken Carter. <laughs> no, it's a. Uh, it looks like all professional athletes and also Coach Carter. So they must be doing tryouts pretty soon for this, I assume. Thinking about getting one out there. <laughs> Honestly? Yeah. I'm pretty wily in the air, man. <laughs> pretty wily in the air. I can see this man's wily. Like slink around people in midair. <laughs> Contort my body Derek Rose style. Uh, all right. That's exciting news. Are so you exciting. as pumped as we are that Slam Ball will be back in our lives this summer? And do you want us to do a podcast series on us? I mean, God, we're doing a pickleball podcast. Of course we're going to do a slam ball podcast. (laughs) Duh. (laughs) It's basketball after all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, All right, let's call it there. We will be back tomorrow live at 10 a.m. Eastern here from the Classic Factory for a little no dunks, breaking down a lot of tonight's games. There's a lot of games on, some uh, potential guys coming back, obviously, to the lineup tonight. John Morant, maybe, maybe. Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, But we'll be breaking all of it down here tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow afternoon, 1 p.m. Eastern, Owen Knight from Survivor 43 here in the factory to talk about tonight's episode four of Survivor 44. Can't wait. That was a lot of numbers. But I think I got it right. You did. He was on 43. Tonight's episode four. We're talking about Survivor 44. All right. We'll see you at 10 a.m. Eastern, though, here from the Classic Factory. Until then, Clipper Bro. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And remember, there's a lot of sports out there. A lot of them. We talk about them all. (laughs) Brace the day, people.